Greetings, friends, and welcome to week one, and this is lecture one. I'm thrilled to be taking this journey with you. In this week, we're going to explore the nature of what we're going to call a missional hermeneutic. Now, there's two words there that I think perhaps even before we move towards the content of what this missional hermeneutic is that we, we ought to explore on the front end. The words missional and hermeneutic. We, we ought not make the assumption that that all of us understand what we mean by that terminology. So in this lecture, let's first explore the word missional. This word is going to be worked out in detail over the course of the, the coming weeks. But I wanted on the front end to talk to you just briefly about what I mean by missional. When we talk about missional in the church, oftentimes people think in terms of missionaries. And they think about the people that we send overseas to other countries, to unreached people groups, uh, to proclaim and make known the name of Jesus. And while that is a part of what it means to be missional, it's not at the essence or the heart of what a missional hermeneutic or a missional ecclesiology or a missional theology is. Oftentimes when we think about being missional, we think in terms of what we might call missional resourcing. And by missional resourcing, I mean the money that we send to other places, both local and global, for the sake of bringing some sort of change in those environments, whether it's to missionary agencies, nonprofits, those doing the work of the kingdom, we, we talk about missional resourcing. And though I, I applaud and, and want to encourage you to continue in your missional resourcing, I also want to say that we ought not confuse that with the heart of what being missional is all about. See, being missional is, is a posture. It's a way of being in the world for the church. It's Being missional is, is the requisite for not simply a specified expertise kind of group of people, those, those who have been raised up and commissioned with a unique vocation to be missional in this world. Missional is incumbent upon every person who calls themselves a follower of Jesus. To be missional is to embrace this unique belief and role and vocation of, of bearing witness to the kingdom of God at work in this world uh, for the sake of God's redemptive purposes. That's what being missional is all about being missional is about a posture about an orientation about the belief that wherever i am no matter what sphere of my life that i'm running in whether it's the workplace the home the school or the leisure activities that i'm engaged in that i bear in my being the call to be representative of the kingdom of god missional is about what the call of God upon the church is to be as it activates its latent potential into the world for the sake of God's redemptive purposes. Now, there's much there that is loaded that we're going to have to explore over the course of the next few weeks. But I want to start on the front end with just this assumption of what it means to be missional. Churches can be missional in a number of ways. In fact, one of the things that you're going to do in this first week is listening to an interview that I taped last year with a good friend of mine who pastors a small church in Evansville, Indiana, but has found ways to leverage that church for the sake of being missional in that community. Not just having specified programs that make a difference within the context of the church, but really posturing and positioning and orienting the church to the community, to the community that it's in, for the sake of bringing redemptive change and transformation in that community, as the people of God are in of themselves mobilized to bear witness to the kingdom of God. This is at the heart of what means to be missional. I'm reminded of a couple passages, multiple passages actually in the book of Luke. Luke is ultimately... And and I maybe you shouldn't have a favorite, but I do. I just love the book of Luke. I love the book of Luke uh, for many reasons. One, I think I think Luke is a masterful storyteller. Secondly, I think Luke's emphasis on those on the margins is really important. 
But I find that within the context of Luke's gospel, there is this missional impulse. And so the, the very mission and ministry of Jesus is birthed out of Isaiah 61 when Jesus goes to the synagogue in, in Luke chapter 4 and he unfurls the scroll of Isaiah and says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach and proclaim good news to the poor. He talks about this recovery sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, that, the, that this is the year of the Lord's favor. And he sets, he sets the tone. He says, the work that I'm doing in this world will be reflective and representative of that. There is change and transformation that is coming into this world. But Jesus is not just a go-it-alone kind of individual. Jesus does what God does throughout scriptures, and he mobilizes a people to join him in a dynamic way in participation with that mission that God is is bearing out in this world. And we see this as early as, as throughout the beginning of the Gospel of Luke. But if you move to Luke chapter 9, listen to what Jesus, listen to what unfolds as Jesus sets the scenes with his early disciples. He says, when Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons, to cure diseases, and he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He told them, take nothing for your journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra shirt, whatever house you are, uh, whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. If people do not welcome you, leave their town and shake the dust off your feet and as a testimony against them. Uh, so they set out and went from village to village proclaiming the good news and healing people everywhere. Early on, Jesus commissions, equips, and deploys the people that were following him to step into the world with this radical and revolutionary message that the kingdom of God is at hand. This kingdom, this space where God gets God's way, this space where the broken are mended, where the hurting are comforted, where, where injustices are transformed and made right, this kingdom of God where people are no longer bound by the powers and principalities at work in this world, but they are set free to live into the flourishing of life that God intended for them to live. Go and proclaim, sent out, dispatched, deployed to serve the mission. But it's not just the 12, and I think that's really important for us to understand. Again, we want to make sure that when we're talking about missional, that this word is incumbent upon every believer, every follower of Jesus, not just a specialized crew. Because if we turn the page from Luke chapter 9 to Luke chapter 10, we see that Jesus is already at work multiplying this mission. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them out two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or a bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. What a powerful passage. So we start with the 12 and we immediately move to the 72. And you can continue to follow this train of multiplication throughout the scriptures because God has intended that those with, for whom he has shaped and purposed that he would help them to fulfill that purpose in this world of bearing witness to the kingdom of God. So when we talk about missional, we're talking about a unique way of envisioning God's purposes in this world through the people of God manifest in the word of God, made possible through the spirit of God, so that the mission of God is fulfilled. That's what we're talking about when we are talking about missional. And this bleeds into and seeps into the life of every single person, every person that calls themselves a follower of Jesus. Because to be a follower of Jesus is to live missionally in a world that desperately needs to see representatives of the kingdom of God bearing witness to God's restorative, reconciling, and redemptive purposes in this world, in word and in deed. We will continue to explore these concepts of missional hermeneutics in, in lecture two.